everybody, so in this video we're looking at the effect of the hormone insulin. So if we start off with where insulin comes from, uh, it's produced in the pancreas and in the pancreas there's tissue throughout the whole pancreas called the islets of Langerhans. So these are found everywhere in the pancreas um, and there are two kinds of cells. We have alpha cells and we have beta cells. So again they're found throughout the whole pancreas. Um, the job of these cells is to detect the blood glucose concentration. So the alpha and the beta cells are receptors. So here we have uh, the, this is representing glucose in the blood. And if the blood glucose concentration increases, then both the alpha and beta cells will detect this. And when the beta cells detect an increase in blood glucose concentration, the beta cells produce insulin. And the insulin gets released into the blood and then is carried away uh, through the blood. At the same time as this, the alpha cells also detect the increase in blood glucose concentration and they stop the production of the hormone glucagon. Okay, so if we have had an increase in blood glucose concentration, perhaps after we've eaten a meal, how could we decrease it? Well, if we think about um, cells and what they do, anything that takes glucose from the blood and takes it into the cells is going to decrease the blood glucose concentration. The first thing that could happen is that um, in certain cells, such as the liver cells, we have stores of glycogen. So this is a glycogen molecule. It's just lots of glucose molecules joined together in a particular way. So the first thing that could happen is that glucose could be taken from the blood into the cells and once it's in the cells it can be then added on and the glycogen molecule can be increased in size. This process is called glycogenesis, so the addition of extra glucose molecules onto the ends of a glycogen molecule. So that could happen in liver cells, it could happen in muscle cells as well. The other thing that happens in all cells is respiration. So if you were to increase the rate of respiration then that would mean that glucose molecules from the blood would be taken into the cells, more of them would be taken in and then those glucose molecules would be used for respiration. So both of these processes would decrease the concentration of glucose in the blood and this is what insulin, um, this is what insulin does, it causes glycogenesis to increase, it causes the rate of respiration to increase. So the other thing is that we can actually not only increase um, the, the processes of glycogenesis and respiration, but we can actually increase how much glucose goes into the cells in the first place. Now this can only take place, this, this increase in the amount of glucose that goes into the cells, this can only happen in muscle cells. So in muscle cells, uh, there's a receptor, it's an insulin receptor, and muscle cells have got uh, proteins in their membrane, channel proteins, which are called GLUT4 proteins. And these GLUT4 proteins are what um, glucose passes through to get into or out of muscle cells. So if we want to increase how much glucose goes into these muscle cells, then what we could do is increase the number of GLUT4 proteins in the cell surface membrane. So here's a vesicle which is in the cell already, which has got extra GLUT4 protein uh, channels in it. So what insulin does, when insulin binds to the receptor, it causes uh, various things to happen which makes the vesicle move towards the cell surface membrane and then causes the vesicle to then fuse with the cell surface membrane and as a result of that, we end up with more GLUT4 proteins in the cell surface membrane, which means that more glucose is able to enter the cell. So if we go back to our synthesis of glycogen, so this is one of the processes that we could uh, increase to enable the body to use more glucose and therefore reduce the blood glucose concentration. So if we just look at a cell, again, with glycogen molecule inside it. Obviously there would be lots of these glycogen molecules 
inside the cell. And here we've got our insulin receptor again. If the blood glucose concentration increases, then the insulin that has been released from the pancreas will bind to the receptor, the insulin receptor, on the cell surface membrane. And that causes the activation of an enzyme inside the cell called glucokinase. Glucose enters the cell and that just happens all the time. Glucokinase adds a phosphate group onto glucose molecules which have already entered the cell. The glucose is now phosphorylated. And the reason this is important is because phosphorylated glucose molecules are trapped inside the cell. They cannot leave the cell again. That means that you could then have a build-up of glucose inside the cell. And once, um, because, this, because the glucose can't leave, that means that the body is able to then add that glucose onto our glycogen molecule. So insulin has activated this molecule which phosphorylates the glucose. The insulin also activates two other molecules. So the first molecule is called phosphofructokinase, and then we have glycogen synthase. And these two molecules take our phosphorylated glucose and they change it around a little bit. But what we end up with is glucose being added onto our glycogen. So these two enzymes, once they're activated, which happens when insulin binds to the cell, these two enzymes increase the process of glycogenesis. And all of that together helps us understand how insulin causes blood glucose concentration to decrease. That's all. Thank you.